If you've been flying multi-rotors for a while and you have a Tyrannus, then you're probably familiar with the D4R2. Well, what's the difference between a D4R2 and something like this X4R? They look about the same size. They uh, have the same number of output pins on the top. They both have the two antennas. They're both covered in this little cardboard thing. Well, let's talk about the differences. First of all, the D4R2 is a four-channel receiver. Now, this can output eight channels if you jumper across uh, through port or uh, channels three and four and this can then output eight channels out of channel one uh, via PPM channel two becomes your RSSI output so something that reads RSSI can uh, you know can communicate with this to figure out what the RSSI reading is this one does not support PPM this one instead supports S bus and the S bus you can see up here by this little SB then on top of the S bus you also have channels one two and three so they say this is a three channel re uh, receiver or 16 and that includes the S bus controller a few other differences between these receivers. This one has a 27 millisecond response time. This one has a five millisecond response time. That's because this one is analog and this one is digital. PPM is the older technology. SBUS is a newer technology. SBUS originally came from Futaba, but it was brought, but FreeSky brought it across into their receivers. Both of these accept an input voltage between four and 10 volts. They both claim they can go about 1.5 kilometers, so they're probably about the same in that uh, in that respect. They both have an A2 channel import, and the A2 channel import is noted on the back of this right here, the AD2, and that's where you can plug something in like your FBVS01, so, so you can get your battery voltage. This one also has an A1 input, but they mark it here as AIN, but it's the same thing as the A2 input on the uh, D4R. Both of these bind the same. You hold down the bind button on uh, the receiver and then you power on your craft and then it binds to the transmitter. They both have a uh, fail safe where once you're all bound up to your multi-rotor, you can, uh, before you arm your multi-rotor, you go ahead and you stick the sticks in the direction that you want for your fail safe and then push the uh, button the bind button on the receiver again just one time real quick less than a second and it saves your um, fail safe settings the x4r also has an s port on the back of it now the s port is different than s bus s bus is for the channels s port is for things like free skies battery voltage monitor and the uh, variometer that they sell and you can actually use this to get individual cell readings off of your cell and have them sent back to your Tyrannus by plugging in their a little adapter piece into your balance port on your battery. This is the wire that's included with the X4R. This plugs into the side port for your external sensors like your um, altimeter or your battery sensor. Now the white wire, like I said, is the A2 signal. And the A2 signal wire is out here by itself because it's not part of those sensors. This is the FreeSky battery voltage monitor. What you can do with this is you solder this side directly into your batteries. Uh, and if you have a three cell or four cell, you want to use this top piece up here where it says 3S. And this side actually goes over and connects into your D4R2. That's what this is actually soldered up for right now. And the A A2 wire is the white wire and the black wire is the ground. Now if you're using the X4R you only need to have the, you should only have to have the one wire here plugged in, the uh, A2 wire, the white one. And I don't think you have to have a ground. If I'm wrong then sorry, but I'm getting ready to hook it up so I will know later if I'm right or wrong. But what this allows you to do is allows the this to read the voltage off of the battery, give it to the receiver so the receiver can send it back down to the Tyrannus so you can set low voltage alarms on your Tyrannus instead of having a low voltage monitor actually on your quadcopter like a buzzer or something like that just, that, just, that would just add uh, more weight to it. So as we finish up this video, let's talk about why you'd want to choose one over the other. Well, if you've been using the D4R2, uh, this is a very good receiver. It's worked excellent for me. I haven't had any problems with it. And the KK2 board, the NASA 32 and the CC3D all support PPM inputs. So this one will work with all of them. This one has S bus. And so I know this works for sure with the, uh, not uh, the CC3D, and I'm pretty sure it works with the NASA 32, but the KK2 board, as far as I know, does not accept the S bus input. So why would you want to use this? Well, 
This also has these three extra channels on here, channels one, two, and three. So while it's outputting S bus here, you can also use channels one, two, and three with your PWM output. So you could hook up two servos onto this, or three servos onto this, or a lost buzzer onto one of these channels and control it with your transmitter. This one, once you plug that uh, jumper across channels three and four, you've pretty much lost the physical channels three and four. Channel two is your RSSI output, so there's no way to hook up a lost alarm buzzer to this receiver. It would have to be hooked up to your transmitter or something else. Also, if you wanted to get into you know, controlling servos on a quadcopter or on an airplane, you do have the three inputs, uh, three outputs over here to control those things. Now they both have the A2 inputs, like I was saying on the back, so they can both connect to an FBV SO1 for your battery voltage. So anyway, these are the two receivers, the D4R2 and the X4R. I've mostly been using this one, but my next quad, I'm gonna be using this one, so hopefully I have a little bit more stronger opinions on it next time. Anyway, any questions about these, you can leave in the comments, but I've pretty much told you everything I know, but I'll try to help you anyway. Thanks for watching.